The following is a reflection on the readings for Friday of the 30th week of Ordinary Time. The first reading is taken from Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 to 11. The responsorial is Psalm 111 and the Gospel is Luke chapter 14 verses 1 to 6. Today, the lectionary begins reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Even though Paul is in prison when he writes this letter, one of the dominant themes is joy, repeated 16 times in four chapters. In the list of 12 fruits of the Spirit that St. Paul enumerated in his letter to the Galatians chapter 5, joy is the second after love. Both of these fruits are listed in today's opening chapter. The reason is that the Philippian church has shared the gospel from the first day of their founding. The church is loving God and their neighbor aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Paul is so joyful in their ministry that he states, quote, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring you to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. End of quote. The church in Philippi started by Paul on his second missionary journey in response to a vision from God was the first established in Europe and therefore held a special place in Paul's heart. Because it was a major travel route connecting Italy and the West with Asia Minor and the East, it was important in terms of spreading the gospel. As a good mentor and father to his young community, Paul encourages their continued growth in ministry and holiness. Quote, and this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. End of quote. Paul's opening statement and prayer have application to us as well. Having begun the Christian life in baptism and strengthened by the other sacraments of initiation, we can experience growth in our faith and joy in ministry. However, we can also experience moments of doubt, whether because of our own sinfulness or sufferings or persecutions that afflict us on the journey of faith. A good example is the current pandemic, which has caused untold anguish in the world. We can ask, where is God in all of this? Why did God allow the virus in the first place and fall into a kind of sadness or even despair? But one must remember that Paul is writing this letter from prison, and he will eventually experience martyrdom for the faith. In his prison letters, it becomes apparent that Paul sees persecution and suffering as opportunities to proclaim the gospel. On the other hand, Paul also sees times of affluence as other opportunities to minister the gospel as well. Whether rich or poor, afflicted or not, Paul has put his trust completely in Christ. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he states, quote, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. End of quote. Thus, when Paul prays that our love may overflow more and more with knowledge and depth of insight, he is not referring to a mere speculative knowledge, but a deep relational knowing of Christ, which has practical effects. So, Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, quote, I can do everything through him who gives me strength, end of quote. This relationship of love with Jesus is everything for Paul, and at the heart of his joy, which is why he begins his letter by acknowledging Jesus three times in the opening verse. Quote, From Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. End of quote. One is reminded of the love expressed in the Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6, quote, Set me like a seal on your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is stronger than death. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. End of quote. 
This love will beckon Paul onward despite severe opposition, rejection, and loss. Everything for Paul is subjected to love for Christ. Thus he writes in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14, quote, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. End of quote. This is single-minded devotion. Paul's relationship with Christ is more important than anything else. In contrast, we have today's gospel. A prominent Pharisee has invited Jesus to his home for a meal on the Sabbath. A meal is traditionally a time for fellowship and communion among family and friends. The Sabbath is also a time to especially honor God who created and sustains all things. Yet we are told that Jesus is being carefully watched. The Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus in some violation of the law in order to accuse him and are willing to use a sick brother and the Lord's Sabbath as occasions to accomplish their evil plans. However, Jesus, who is love itself, not only heals the person physically, but teaches those at the meal about the kingdom of God, seeking to heal his enemies spiritually. The Pharisees will have none of it. They continue to pursue Jesus with the goal of putting him to death. At this point, we should ask, what set Paul apart for such a love of Christ versus the Pharisees on their relentless pursuit of hatred? Paul was, after all, once a Pharisee, in fact, a Pharisee of Pharisees, as he states, well trained in the law, having studied under the great master Gamaliel. As we discover in Acts chapter 9 and chapter 22, it was his encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus that changed everything. Paul was going in one direction, and suddenly Christ stopped him in his tracks. He heard the voice of Jesus speak to his heart. This is what we must do as well. Through prayer and meditation on the Gospels, we open our hearts to Christ and are changed. Continued conversion keeps us in a dynamic relationship that relativizes everything else, especially the hurts, betrayals, and sufferings that can rob us of joy. At a time when many are falling away from Christ and the Church, we are called to increase the intensity of our love. Although we cannot go on retreat as readily as before the pandemic, we can set aside a space in our home for a holy hour. Within that precious time, a mix of prayer, meditation, reading scripture and tradition, together with the lives of the saints and other spiritual reading, can change our lives. This holy hour is the matrix of joy. We must remember that after Paul's conversion, he went into the wilderness of Arabia, where he spent considerable time alone in meditation to understand and deepen his relationship with Christ. This explains Paul's joy in any and every circumstance, and why he makes joy a prime theme in his prison letter to the church in Philippi. Let us continually encounter conversion through a determined effort to meet Christ in a holy hour dedicated to love. Then, as Paul prayed, we will grow in knowledge and full insight, so that now and in the day of Christ we will be pure and blameless 
having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen.